The long, steep gradients on either side of the line summit at Rennsteig are particularly challenging, and there's always been a need for powerful locomotives. Ever since 1923, most of the dominant motive power on the line has been provided by hefty 2102 tank engines, known as Class 95s. 95027 was built by Hanemag and ended service in 1923. We have a clear line, so let's enjoy the first leisurely 12 miles up the romantic Steinach Valley to Lauscha. for this film is the Swiss canton of Valais. Tourism is one of its major industries. Many of the countless visitors who come here every year take the BLS, the famous Lutschberg Simplon Railway, eager to explore the magnificent mountain world around the famous Matterhorn. The BVZ is also modernising its locomotive fleet with almost identical thyristor locos. But it still needs to use its older crocodile-shaped machines for many scheduled services. The HGE 44s with the numbers 11 to 15 entered service between 1929 and 1930. Many different companies were involved in building them. They are mainly used on goods and work trains. The line between Visp and Zermatt is 22 miles long. The difference in altitude is nearly 3,300 feet, and there are six rack sections with a total length of some five miles and a maximum gradient of one in eight. Our goods train has just entered the fifth rack section between the stations of Herbriggen and Rander. This is the machine that once really helped to get the Industrial Revolution moving. The steam engine, placed on rails, made distances shrink and provided greater mobility than people had ever known before. The Iron Horse was to become one of the truly impressive inventions to appear in the technological world of the 19th and 20th century. In autumn 1989, there was an opportunity to turn back the clock and to relive the magic of steam. Four of the German Reichsbahn's preserved steam locomotives returned for a few days to their former mainline and branch line duties around the important junction of Saalfeld. Two classes of steam engine we see here, leaving Düsseldorf at full steam, were amongst the most powerful ever built in Germany. On the left, 41360. And on the right, 011100, a locomotive built to haul express services.
Come with us in film on a train they call the world's slowest express. The actual 180 mile journey from St. Moritz to Zermatt takes about eight hours and en route will be treated to some of Switzerland's most stupendous mountain scenery. This is the best known private railway in Switzerland and also the most famous narrow gauge railway in the whole of Europe. We are of course talking about the Eretische Bahn or Riesen Railway, RHB for short. This railway celebrated its 100th anniversary in October 1989. Railway enthusiasts from all over the world are spellbound by the impressive and often adventurous routes over which its network has been engineered. Then there is the romantic, untouched and in places absolutely idyllic countryside of the Grison Canton. And let's not forget the Riesen Railway's varied rolling stock, which includes a number of real gems. Today, Lisbon has more than a million inhabitants. The first trams appeared in its streets in 1873. They were hauled by mules. It turned out that the steep gradients were really too much for the animals, and the first electric tram line was opened in 1901 with a gauge of 900 millimetres. Today, the network has a total length of 60 miles. It is served by a fleet of over 200 vehicles. One of the commonest classes of tram is known as MV-115. These four-wheelers were built between 1926 and 1947. Another frequent class is the GE-59. These single saloon bogey trams were built between 1900 and 1935 and some have so-called maximum bogies. 140 of them are still in service. The overhead wires carry 580 volts, which the trams collect by means of trolley rollers and poles. The roller is secured with a rope, which can also be used for lowering the pole. The muffled, reverberating sound of a ship's foghorn is a good clue as to where we are. One of the few meccas for steam enthusiasts still left in Turkey is on the coast, to be more precise, on the Black Sea. The TCDD's class 45 O's still haul all the passenger and freight services on the splendid mountain line from Areli up to Armutuk. This is the 6.30 train from Ireli, arriving in Armutruk some 40 minutes later. Armutruk is an important coal mining town and most of the early morning passengers are miners going to work. The major coal reserves around Armutruk were the original reason for the pre-war plans to construct a line from Irma near Ankara to Ireli via Karabük and Zongoldak. By 1937 the line had been completed as far as the Black Sea port of Zongoldak. The planned continuation as far as Ereli was however never built. It was only after the war in 1953 that this nine mile long line from Armutruk to the port of Ereli was finished. It has never been connected to the rest of the Turkish network. The only freight on the line is coal. This is carried down from the Armutruk collieries to Ereli where it is either loaded onto ships or used as a fuel in one of the local steel mills. In spring 1989 three class 45 steam locomotives are still available for this service. This was a class built between 1927 and 1935. It can be seen as a further development of the Prussian G82s, being somewhat bigger and more powerful. The class originally totaled 62, some being built by the Norwegian company Nohab and some by Tubiz of Belgium. 
the Grison, the Engadine, St. Moritz, Pontresina, the Bernina Massif. Names to savour. Names that symbolise one of Switzerland's most beautiful mountain regions. This region is served by the Eretische Bahn or Rieschen Railway with its electrified metre gauge lines from Landquart to Davos, from Cour to Decentis, Arosa and St. Moritz, as well as the absolutely stupendous Bernina line from the Upper Engadine through some fantastic mountain countryside and on south over the Italian border to Tirano. This is the last steam snowplow that the RHB has kept in working order. It has reached the ripe old age of over 80 and its home territory is as ever the Bernina line. If the need arises, Pontresina Depot does however send it out on other RHB lines. In this film we will be accompanying this fascinating machine on one of its now rare outings over the Bernina Pass. Preparations are already underway many hours before the scheduled tour of duty. The fire was started during the night and with the day now dawning more and more coal briquettes need to be added in order to build up the steam pressure. On mountain railways these rotary snow plans have two jobs to do. Firstly, either during or after snowstorms they have to clear those sections of track where the volume of snow is simply too much for standard non-rotary types of snowplow. Secondly, and this is just as important, they have to clear away the wall of snow which ordinary snowplows leave right next to the track and which tends to accumulate with every fresh fall. Teamwork's the name of the game here. First of all, a special clearing vehicle pulled by a locomotive, or in our case a rail car, scrapes the banks of snow into the path of the rotary machine which is then able to propel it well clear of the line. It is considered good operating practice to use a rotary snow plow to clear the area next to the track at an early stage. This helps to keep the train service going since it is then easier for ordinary snow ploughs or even trains with a plough attachment to push away any new light or moderate cover of snow. <laughs> <laughs> 